Hi, this is Mahesh Ravi and in this video, it's sort of a continuation to the previous video where we spoke about how to design for cognitive load. So we are going to talk about how to design for a good flow. So let's try and understand what exactly is flow. So in simpler terms, flow is a state where the user feels that the difficulty of the task that they are handling is a good match to their skill. It's, it's not too tough for them. It's also not too easy for them. And when the flow is good, the user feels more productive. The user feels in control. The user gets a feeling of accomplishment. All of this will actually benefit our product because the user experience is going to be very good. How to actually create a good flow in your design? If the task is too simple, it might feel boring to them. If the task is too hard, it might actually feel frustrating to the user. The key is to balance these two things where it's not that simple, that's not, not that hard either. So there is the factor of engagement in it. You cannot just be passive about the task. You need to be actively engaged in the task that you're handling, which gives them a sense of accomplishment because it actually sort of challenges um, their skill. So we are going to take a look at how uh, this can be implemented in a task and I will take you through a design that I have done. This is again a continuation of the previous uh, design task that I showed you, uh, the blogging platform. So let's go to Figma and take a look at how um, flow can be created in a blogging platform's design. So let's open the file. We are in Figma right now and you can see um, that I have extended the design with a couple of more screens to show you how this all works. So if you go here to the home screen, this is what we saw in the cognitive loop thing. So cognitive loop, just to summarize it, is to design your interface so that they don't have to carry any sort of previous information to use your site. It's, it's very clear. So the user comes in and they know that this is where they have to click to write their first blog and the readability of you know the content that they need to read is right here so it should be self-explanatory if you want to um, reduce the cognitive load of the user thus giving them a good experience so we were discussing about that in the previous video and we are going to talk about the flow so for that i basically created a couple of more screens so if they click on the first blog they will go to this particular window and um, you can see that um, there is a blog title and all that stuff here. So one other thing that I have done here to make the experience slightly better is the application of Fitz law. So Fitz law sort of says that the um, function will be much more efficient if the user can quickly access or see the action points, the user touch points. So that's the reason uh, the buttons or a phone is quickly accessible with your thumb. So similarly, I have done something here. So if you click on the right, right your first blog, it is going to go to this page. So when they are in the website and clicking on this, their mouse cursor is going to be here itself. So what I've done is when they go to the next page, the next action is right here. So they don't have to move their mouse a lot to click on the next action point. So this is a good application of Fitz law. Wherever their mouse was in the previous screen, we are sort of maintaining the same position. So there, the friction that, you know, um, the distance created is very, very less. So they can click immediately here and they can go. So this screen um, is sort of where they will enter the blog heading, drag and drop all the images and type the content of your blog. So this, is, this seems very easy for them. So if you are a blogger, with a certain sense of uh, knowledge, right? And you're coming here and you're seeing this, it's very simple. So when the user affordance is very, very simple, they will get bored with it. And that's what we spoke about it. If it is too hard with a lot of options here in the screen, they might also feel frustrated on how to figure it out. So how to make a good flow when we balance both of these things. So once you create your blogging content and when you are going to the next page of this. So immediately, this is sort of like the preview screen here. So you can see that when they go to this, it is actually saying something like select each element to customize the look of your blog. So we are giving them a little bit of control on how the blog is going to look right now. And again, 
we are not going to make it too complicated we are going to keep it simple we are going to keep it balanced um, with the skill of a blogger so how this basically works is that if you click on an element a menu is going to pop up right here so if they click on it they can see you know uh, this element is selected and this section will pop up whether you want a classy look modern look or loud look so if you select classy it's going to give you a classy look right here and if you select modern it will change and if you click loud it will change so you can see that by changing uh, this right we are giving the user a little more control on how the blog is going to look like and we are not giving them a lot of options like change the font or the size or anything like that because they are bloggers and they are not um, designers so we give them a balanced difficulty here so that the experience is good now uh, let's go back to the design and let's take a look at another example right here so in this option also I have created another option after the, they select one element they also have an option where they can select the layout for their blog so they can change it to a modern layout they can change it to something which is more retro they can do that I, I hope this actually gives you, um, you know, a sense of what exactly is good flow um, and how to actually balance difficulty with the skill of the user and how to create a perfect combination that satisfies the user. And this can be, if you think about any of the productivity apps out there, right, um, Trello or Notion um, or any of these apps, uh, notion is something which is a little too hard for a layman to actually get into it so that at times it might actually make you frustrated but if you actually think about let's say Google Calendar or tweak it's too simple or easy for a user and it doesn't actually give you a sense of accomplishment but if you take a tool like Trello which balances um, both of these things brilliantly it's easy but it's it has a certain amount of complexity to it and when you're doing or when you're working on Trello it constantly gives you a sense of accomplishment to an average user I'm not talking about an expert so this is what flow actually means I hope the video is clear and if you have any questions please do comment and um, we'll be creating more videos like this in the future thank you and I'll see you with another video soon